Women, when it comes to relationships and dating, we are all inclined to repeat the same cycles over and over again. Think about it. How many times have you said to yourself, I dated this guy, the same guy six months ago, the exact same guy, but with a different face. In this video, what we're going to dive into right away is something that I found to be really, really effective at helping women break that cycle. And that something is my seven step success system for finding lasting love. Let's begin with number one, which is understanding how your past influences your present. By exploring your childhood, childhood traumas and schemas, relationship history, what has become your normal in relationships, plus assessing your relationship readiness now and summarizing your current status. It is all going to help set the groundwork for what needs to be changed to create your new life. For example, let's say that you grew up in a household in which your father figure was an alcoholic an abusive alcoholic. Chances are you'd be saying to yourself, no way, there's no way in hell I'd ever date someone like that. When all the while your subconscious is telling you, ah, oh, that type of behavior, it's fine. I know that sounds like a load of crap, but the subconscious mind is a powerful thing. And it's the reason why so many of us end up in toxic relationships. Being aware of this, Understanding how your past influences your present will play a big part in setting the table for you becoming hot property when it comes to the dating scene. You need to become a successful single first. That means you need to feel amazing about yourself in all areas of your life so that when you do set your foot back into that dating ring, you'll be able to attract a similar successful single just like yourself. And this is critical. Okay, let's move on to step two, which is finding the motivation to change, creating your life vision. In creating your life vision, you need to look at everything in your life, your family, your finances, your friends, your job, your health, your fitness. Are your friends and family doing okay? How's your relationship with them? How's your financial situation? Are you in debt? Are you happy with your career? Are you satisfied with your health, level of fitness, and the shape of your body? If you want to make positive changes in any of those areas, you need to create a new vision that will take you from your present situation to your dream situation. You need to set new goals to achieve the future you that you want. Use out-of-the-box thinking to create solutions to pressing situations and prepare for setting new goals that you want to achieve, while all along keeping in mind that what you think about comes about. When it comes to setting goals, what three to four new things can you do that you haven't tried yet to bring about what you want to achieve? For example, if it's, I want a new boyfriend in three months, you may look into one, be out of debt, two, lose 15 pounds, and three, buy some sexy new clothes for those dates. Then you work on those things daily to bring this goal to completion. Consider if you typically spend $4 a day at Starbucks unbelievable coffee with whipped cream, you could instead decide to make regular coffee at home, which will not only save you money, but a ton of calories too. Small steps like that, these daily steps, doing them consistently will help you achieve your goals. Make sense? Good. Now let's move on to step number three, goal setting for personal growth and success. To go from your present situation to your dream situation, you need to set goals daily, weekly and monthly. First, you need to set goals up from day one to six months out and then all the way to two years out. The three categories of the goals you'll be setting are personal, business or educational, and relationship goals. For example, here's a sample of three daily goals for improving your personal situation and let's say it's self-esteem. Schedule a dental appointment to have your teeth whitened. This will build your self-esteem. Two, order vitamins and protein powder to keep you energized. This also would contribute to your self-esteem. And number three, go to the gym. This goal-setting system, once you commit to it, 
you'll make amazing strides. Because it's not overwhelming, it's clearly defined, you know exactly what's coming next, and you'll see your growth happening slowly but surely over time. Speaking of growth, use the following motivational activities to help inspire your growth. Inspirational audio programs, for example. These will help you keep inspired and on track. Listen to tapes from spiritual and motivational masters such as Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, and Tony Robbins. Second, use daily affirmations to keep yourself motivated. Use positive self-talk in your head to compliment yourself for job well done. Or you can use rhymes, I like to do that, like what you believe you will achieve, and I believe I'm losing weight every day and I'm looking amazing. Three, meditation. Meditate 15 minutes a day to help lessen anxiety, depression, and stress in your life. Meditation also increases the feel-good chemicals in the brain that bring about improved energy and a sense of calm. All this stuff helps. It helps a lot. So let's move on now to step four. For number four, you need a sense of spirituality and life balance to find the right mate. This is so true. You need a balance of mind, body, and spirit because these three things really help you and keep yourself happy and together. For example, when one feels anxious or depressed, their balance in life is way off. You need to rebalance yourself at least once a week. The way I do this is on Sundays, I meditate, I get a motivational spiritual lesson by watching Joel Osteen on TV, who I love, and then I go to the gym and work on my body. And I connect with nature after that by going to the beach and reading. This helps me connect with my soul while improving my mind. Life balance is essential for you to have. You can't expect someone else to have the positive attributes you're seeking if you don't have them first. You have to be what you want to attract. So be sure to nurture the mind, body, spiritual side of yourself at least once a week, twice as best, to stay positive, balanced, and stress-free. That's the basis of the law of attraction. You have to be what you want to attract. So let's move on to step five, which is being able to detect healthy love versus toxic love. So you can break your negative cycles while dating. The first thing you need to do here in step five is to clearly know your values, requirements, wants, and needs you're looking for in a man. So you will know exactly what to do as you begin to search for a mate. You're going to know the exact questions to ask when you go out on dates one and two. By the end of the second date, you will know if you have potential with this man for a long-term relationship based on his answers. Just a few of the questions that I teach. Here's three of them three probing questions you'll want to ask that can clarify so much in a potential mate. One, tell me about your parents. Are they still together? And what were they like when you were growing up? You're looking for any signs of abuse, addiction, or abandonment here, plus the relationship that they currently have with their parents. Number two, do you have kids? How old are they? And what are they doing in their lives? Remember to keep these questions very conversational. But this question is for older women who are looking for a partner over 40. Ideally, you're looking for an adult kids who have successfully launched, are emotionally happy and healthy, and financially stable and on their own. If there are problems in this area, you should be at least somewhat concerned about continuing to date this person. Or, if you're a younger woman and you want to be married and have a family, you need to ask, are you a man who sees yourself being married and having a family one day? If you definitely want kids, you want to hear a positive and strong yes, I definitely want kids. Not a response like, well, maybe I'll have kids. I'm not really sure. The last and third important question, what do you like to do for fun? If you hear, go to the gym, play golf, and see my buddies, he's into having a lot of individual time where you may not fit into his schedule. If you hear street fairs, go to the beach, I love concerts, Broadway shows, and travel, these are the activities would be most enjoyed with a partner. And make sure you have enough in common that you're gonna enjoy that relationship over time. Once you've got that mapped out, you're gonna to need to know the trigger things to look for, which are, if you're on a date and the guy has five martinis, you know he has an alcohol issue and you're not gonna to wanna to date him anymore. Another example would be if you're on a date 
and the person is consistently complaining about their ex, you're going to know that he's still very bitter and angry over the breakup or the divorce, and he still may be in love with his ex, and you're not going to want to date him anymore. In doing these specific things that I teach, asking these questions and knowing what to listen for by gathering this important information on the first and second date, it will become crystal clear to you whether or not you're going back into that negative cycle that you want to break. And all of it will contribute to your confidence. This is so important because once you feel confident about who you are and what you want, you'll be able to attract a healthy partner and you'll be able to kindly dismiss the toxic gents, those losers, players, and abusive riffraff who you want nothing to do with, okay? Now, on to step six, which is knowing the skills for successful dating so you can find that perfect relationship. Here are just a few of those essential skills. One, to be able to scout, screen, and sort potential partners effectively. Two, to be able to clearly identify toxic personality types quickly before you're becoming too emotionally involved. Three, to know how to balance time for yourself, your life vision, and at the same time, search for a partner. Four, to know how to understand and use the law of attraction. Five, to be clear about what type of relationship you're seeking and to be actively involved in all the activities where you can meet that ideal man. Six, to know effective communication skills and feel great about your life so that you're bringing engaging conversation to each date. With these essential skills, you'll be able to create the perfect online profile and be able to flirt effectively and attract quality men with ease. Okay, here we are at step seven, which is how to avoid the dating traps while having an attraction and dating practice plan. The first thing we do with this step is to know the rules for effective communication and dating. And a few of those rules are this. One, to keep the conversation light and positive and not complain about yourself, your health, or others. Two, to speak with moderation. Don't talk just about yourself. Ask him intriguing, intelligent questions so that they feel you're really interested. Three, listen intently and with curiosity. Don't be forming other ideas in your head. Four, to remember what they have shared while at the same time listening for any warning signs that they may not be right for you. Five, to not assume something that was not said or bring up your issues or any of your exes. Once you find a great candidate, use the following checklist for detecting any red flags. There are really actually about 30 of them, but here are a few of the most important ones to watch out for. One, he reacts to frustration with anger, rage, and blame. Two, he blames others or life circumstances for his own situation currently. Three, he tries to control everything, including you. That's no good. Four, he's immature, impulsive, and or responsible. Five, he's emotionally distant, void or aloof. Others are, he's still pining for a past relationship. He wants to make his sad life better by dating you. He's married, separated, or otherwise unavailable to commit to you. He has an active addiction or addictive behavior, which he rationalizes as, ah, oh, it's not a problem. All of this knowledge will put you into an optimal position for finding or creating a committed, evolved relationship that can lead to intimacy and engagement. It also can help you be confident about having a better quality, passionate sex life. And because we all know that relationships don't always work out, you'll be glad to know that if you ever do find yourself in a position where you need to end a relationship, you'll know the proper way to end it with love, dignity, and peace so that you'll be able to quickly recover and date again. Believe it or not, after a breakup, some people won't go out and date for years. It's true, those clients have come to me. After a toxic relationship, they're paranoid and afraid to get back out there. Don't ever fall into one of those ruts. Give it a month, get your life together, 
refocus on you, your work, your friends, and your family, your health and fitness. Then stop wasting your time mourning over that someone that is probably a blessing in disguise that you broke up with. With this knowledge, you will be able to confidently date and enjoy the process. Okay, wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? Well, I told you I was going to give you everything that you needed to know to stop repeating the cycles of the past and meet the man of your dreams. And that was just the first installment. In our next video, I'm going to reveal to you the five guys you should never date. You don't wanna miss this. These are the guys who are so easy to fall for, but will break your heart almost every time. So you're definitely going to wanna to tune in for that. But until then, go back, watch this video again, and start putting these tips into action for yourself. And I promised you, in almost no time, you'll see just how powerful they really are.